I was at Woodstock when the Iranian Revolution happened in 1979, and we had a sudden influx of kids from basically both sides of that conflict. We did have uh, students whose families were working in places like Afghanistan, so I think I was always sort of intrigued by the places they had come from and knowing a little bit about the, you know, what is going on there in the civil war. I think that's probably why I ended up being drawn to seeking out Afghanistan as my first diplomatic assignment overseas. For me, coming here, it was coming from, I was coming from more or less a monoculture in a way, so a part of India, in Northeast India, Nagaland, very different from the rest of India. So coming here was the first time I could be exposed and realize that, the, you know, life was composed of different people from different religious backgrounds, ethnic groups within India itself, let alone from around the world. And I came from what looks like monoculture, um, small town in Pennsylvania. I um, was fortunate that my father and aunt and uncle had been at Woodstock and that my father went into anthropology. And so I, I understood and had had some immersive experiences in the U.S. And the staff historically have been just so deeply invested. They spend so much time. You know, these were staff with families of their own and they would have me out of boarding and you know, they really looked out for everybody, but you know, they were good at recognizing you know, when a kid needed something extra. Historically, the staff and faculty investing in students like that can give people coming from those conflict zones was hard for peace. That, that's, that stability here for four years or whatever, how much time we, we have to spend here. And Forty years later, it, it's still family. You can still call on a Woodstocker, run into a Woodstocker, and you have this shared this shared experience, this shared bond. I also think that they, these scholars would bring, bring a level of diversity that, that I think you might not find in many other places, many other schools. Yeah. And I've heard that from, from like the student the co-presidents who participated in board meetings. They've said oh, yeah. how much mm. the Scholars for Peace contribute to the school community. We had that both economic and social diversity. Um, and, and at the same time, you would find something in common Yep. with the person who did not look anything like you and did not necessarily have the, have the same background. The only way to overcome prejudice, stigma, or even just preconceived notions is immersive exposure. Yeah, you know, we all think, you know, what can we do to increase the diversity of staff, increase the diversity? A lot of that is a long-term project. This is a way to make immediate impact on those numbers, to immediately get this diversity into the student body. $20 is a really, really cheap way to move the needle toward peace, to move the needle toward understanding. The power of just put it, setting up an automatic payment every month versus oh, yeah. having to think about it periodically. It's just set aside that money that's just going to be a few Starbucks a month exactly. and then you forget it's even there because it's such a small amount a month amongst yeah. all your other expenses yeah. in, in our daily life in the West. If there were more schools like Woodstock there would be fewer wars. Yeah. It's a small amount to pay for world peace.